Hey guys, in this lecture, we will discuss the different modes of radioactive decay. Radioactive decay is the spontaneous breakdown of an atomic nucleus resulting in the release of energy and matter from the nucleus. Note that a radioisotope or a radionuclide has unstable nuclei that does not have enough binding energy to hold the nucleus together. Thus, it results to a decay process. In this lecture, I will discuss the different modes of radioactive decay. I will start by introducing the terminologies used in radioactive decay discussion followed by the modes that include the beta minus decay, isomeric transition, internal conversion, electron capture, the positron emission, alpha emission, nuclear fission, and a short discussion of the application and the summary of the discussion. Radioactive decay is just a process where we have this unstable nucleus that transforms to a more stable nucleus through particle or energy emission. The parent refers to the unstable radioactive nucleus and the product, which refers to the daughter, refers to the more stable uh, nucleus that can be radioactive or stable. We also have this uh, transi transition energy Q, which refers to the total mass energy conversion of the decay process. The stability of a nucleus is determined by different forces acting between nucleons. Stable nuclei contain a balanced configuration of protons and neutrons. Shown in this list are the number of stable nuclei per case. For example, uh, we have even Z, even protons, then even number of neutrons, then we have this number of stable nucleides. Same with even Z and odd N, odd Z, even N, and odd Z, odd N. The number of protons and neutrons determine the nuclear stability and the possible decay modes as well. Now, this spontaneous disintegration follow four fundamental conservation laws. First, we have the conservation of electric charge. It states that the sum of charges on all the particles before and after a reaction are the same. Second, we have the conservation of nucleons. And it states that the total number of nucleons before and after are the same. Third, conservation of momentum. The total momentum of interacting particles before and after a reaction are the same in the absence of net external force. Last is the conservation of energy, and this means that the energy, including the rest mass energy, before and after the reaction should also be the same. We know that if the ratio of neutron with proton is too high, the nuclei would be unstable, and one possible decay mode is the conversion of internal neutron into proton, accompanied by the emission of an electron or beta minus particle from the nucleus, and an antineutrino as well. Note that neutrino is just a particle with no mass or electrical charge, but it carries away a fraction of energy released in the process. As shown in this standard nuclear notation, the parent nuclei X decays to a daughter product Y, shown here, which represent a different chemical element. Therefore, beta minus results in elemental transmutation. The decay process can be illustrated with the decay scheme shown here for phosphorus 32. It decays solely by beta minus emission together with other radionuclide important in medicines such as hydrogen 3 or carbon 14. We have here the parent, the line of the parent and its half-life. Then we have this transition for beta minus going to a stable state for sulfur 32. The decay is to the right given that the atomic number increases. Next, we have this graph that illustrates the energy of beta minus uh, particle and the neutrino. We have here the maximum possible beta particle energy. For our case, we have 1.71 mega electron volts and the average energy of beta minus particle can be approximated as the one-third of the max possible beta minus particle energy. There are cases when a beta minus decay may result in a daughter nucleus in an excited or metastable state. 
rather than in the ground state. This refers to a beta minus gamma emission shown here. Using our standard nuclear notation, it can be represented as follows. So we have the parent that will decay to an excited state or metastable state, and this will further decay to a stable state. Note that the emission of gamma does not lead to a new element or transmutation. One example here is this, uh, the decay of xenon-133, and it can decay to one of the three excited states of cesium-133. Then the excited daughter, shown in this decay scheme, so these are the excited daughter, will decay to a more stable state through gamma emission. The number of nuclei uh, decaying on a certain step is determined by the probability values for a specific region nucleide. If beta minus particle has a continuous distribution of energies, gamma rays, which is a characteristic of that specific region nucleide, has this discrete uh, spectrum shown here. These gamma rays can be easily measured because they are highly penetrating. Okay, next we have isometric transition. When a daughter nucleus is formed in a long-lived metastable or isomeric state, the decay is through gamma ray emission. It is similar to an excited state wherein it emits gamma rays, except that the average lifetime of metastable is longer. An example of this is the decay of region nucleide cesium-137 with the half-life of 30, 30 years, which decays into a metastable barium-137M most of the time, so 94.6%. Then from this metastable state, this will decay, going to a stable barium-137. We also have this alternative decay path. Internal conversion is just an alternative to gamma ray emission. Instead of releasing gamma ray, an orbital electron is emitted, as shown in the drawing. This can occur in an excited state, but commonly occurred for metastable nucleides. You can imagine this as if the gamma ray energy is internally absorbed by an orbital electron, usually in the inner shells, in the K or L shell. And one requirement is that the energy should be sufficient compared to the binding energy of the orbital electron. The probability that this will occur is expressed as the ratio of the conversion electrons emitted to the gamma rays emitted and expressed as variable alpha. Note also that beta minus uh, point of origin is in the nucleus and it has a continuous energy spectrum. While conversion electrons, the point of origin is the orbital shell and it has discrete energies. Technetium 99M is one of the most popular region nuclide for nuclear imaging studies. Shown here is the decay scheme diagram of this metastable nuclide wherein it releases this gamma, gamma ray with an energy of about 140 kilo electron volts. Let us now go to the next decay mode. A nucleus with low neutron proton ratio can decay by capturing and absorbing an electron from orbital shell. Since it usually captures electron from the K-shell, it is commonly called the K-capture. It results in the reduction of the atomic number and the mass number is not changed. Thus, this is an isobaric decay. We have the same A. The process produces a neutron, uh, neutrino, and the remaining energy may appear as characteristic X-rays or OJ electrons. Electron captures uh, commonly results in an excited or metastable daughter, shown in this decay diagram. It can release gamma rays or conversion electrons. Shown here is a decay scheme of iodine-125 uh, used in radioimmunoassay studies or RIA. Note that electron capture decay is to the left given that your Z, the number of protons, decreases by 1. This decay mode is the same case as the previous decay mode that we have discussed. When the nuclear neutron proton ratio is too low for stability, another possible decay is positron emission. A proton in the nucleus is transformed into a neutron 
and a positively charged electron called positron or beta plus and a neutrino are ejected from the nucleus. This drawing uh, illustrates the annihilation reaction between a positron or a beta plus and an ordinary electron. Pair of 0.511 mega electron volt uh, annihilation photons are emitted at 180 degrees to each other. And this is true for conservation of momentum for a stationary electron positron pair. A coincidence counting is used in PET scan actually to detect the decay event. A minimum uh, transition energy uh, requirement of 1.022 mega electron volts is needed before beta plus decay can occur. So this is one of the unique things about this decay mode. The excess uh, to this 1.022 mega electron volts will be shared by the positron and neutrino. Positron energy spectrum is similar for beta minus particles. We have here the decay scheme of oxygen-15, a beta-plus emitter used as a tracer in measurement of regional blood volume and flow and oxygen as well, oxygen metabolism for PET scan. Shown is the minimum transition energy for beta, uh, beta-plus, and the remaining energy is shared by the daughter and neutrino. We also have fluorine-18, which is used for PET imaging. Uh, that decays by both electron capture and beta plus emission competitively. Although not utilized for physiologic tracing and imaging, we have another decay mode, which is the alpha emission. Alpha particles are not good penetrators and they have short range, approximately 0.03 millimeters in the body's tissue. It consists of two neutrons and two protons, thus we can write this decay using our standard notation as follows. Next, we have this one. The decay chain or decay series refers to a series of radioactive decays of various radioactive decay products. This is a sequential series of transformation. Three main decay chains are observed in nature called the uranium series, thorium series, and actinium series. And the ending of these three are stable isotopes of lead. The mass number A of every isotope in these chains can be represented as follows. We have 4n plus 2 for uranium, 4n for thorium, and 4n plus 3 for actinium series. The fourth chain, which is the neptunium series, with A is equal to 4n plus 1, is already extinct in nature. Thus, this is mostly a synthetic series. This is a diagram illustrating the radioactive decay chains of the non-synthetic elements and the four decay chains shown are the thorium in blue, we have radium in red, actinium in green, and neptunium in purple. Last is nuclear fission, which is a spontaneous fragmentation of a very heavy nucleus into a lighter nuclei, shown in the figure. The process will produce two or three fission neutrons. Most of the energy is imparted as kinetic energy to the uh, recoiling nuclear fragments or fission fragments and ejected neutrons. Okay, now let's go to the application. Most radionuclides used in the clinical setting are made by bombarding a nucleus with a particle such as a neutron or a proton. Beta emitters can be made by neutron bombardment using a nuclear reactor while positron emitters and nucleides undergoing electron capture can be created by the bombardment of positive particles such as protons using a cyclotron. This table shows the summary of our discussion. I think it's a decay mode, the primary emission, and the parent nucleus. I also added here proton emission decay and neutron emission decay, which is uh, for, for the extreme cases of very large proton excess or if we have an imbalance in the number of neutrons, which is quite extreme. I have this drawing for the chart of nucleides that shows the possible decay paths for a parent nucleide to attain a more stable configuration. Let's say through beta minus going there, we have the proton here and then the neutron here, then beta plus and AC, uh, proton emission, neutron emission, and alpha decay. Spontaneous fission, gamma decay, and internal conversion decay are not shown here. If you want to search 
for a nuclei decay type, let's say, or radiation and half-life, you can also check this app for more uh, details. This is an isotope browser app of IEEA. It provides the properties of more than 4,000 nucleides and isomers, and among other things, available in iOS and Android devices. Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, GT Academy. See you in the next video.